Welcome back to the channel, everybody, right? Hope you're having a great weekend so far, right? So this article is titled, Is the U.S. Dollar Losing Its Grip? The Rise of Alternative Reserve Currencies. Now, wait a minute. Remember we went over this recently? There's a, a cadre of actual reserve currencies. You have the dollar, you have the yuan, I think the Australian uh, currency is one of them also. This is all determined by the IMF. I know a lot of people believe the U.S. dollar is the only reserve currency. While it's the dominant one, it's not the only reserve currency. And rapidly, as you've seen, others are turning towards other currencies, which is interesting when you think about the new financial system, is it not? Now, if they can't all get on one page, I don't see the U.S. or anyone in the West. They just love power too much. I just don't see them bending the knee to any other currency or letting them play if they don't let them play then how does everything work out in the end how do they all interact how do they all transact with each other we know they don't, the world the bulk of the world if what we're to believe is true with the BRICS nations we just saw an article come out the other day by the way you can look all of this up we saw an article come out the other day saying that 36 new countries new that's in addition to the other ones that have applied 36 new countries want to join BRICS nations. Now, if all of these countries around the world are joining BRICS nations and then the following day, they put out an article saying that now I don't know. Listen, I can't confirm all of this. I'm not a part of BRICS nations. I don't know. I just know what the articles are saying. An article, article came out after that one saying something akin to um, those countries are willing to ditch the dollar. Now, if you have all of these dollars being ditched, of course, the dollar is going to lose power. Then if all those dollars have to come home, you're you're looking at hyperinflation at some point. If that if that happens, you're looking at hyperinflation. Now, a lot of people want to talk about numbers and such, but numbers do lie. Numbers tell the story of whoever controls the number, whoever's the controller of anything tells the story. They wield it how they how they may. It's the same thing with history. History is written by the victors, right? Um, currency is no different. Numbers and data is no different. Whoever controls the numbers controls the narrative. But so you look at inflation right now, you know, they negate certain things from that inflation data. That's important, like uh, energy and food costs and things like that. So people can, you know, debate on that. Well, it's, it's inflation. No, it's, it's price gouging. Who cares? Either way, the people in the United States are suffering. Right. So what it means is that that system is breaking down. There's breaking down. If there's no solution to be deployed, no, no viable current solution to be deployed. And I look at the new financial system as a future solution. So let me just put that to the side. Then that means that system is breaking down. So now reserve currencies. We know well, number one, we know there's a bunch of different reserve currencies, according to the IMF. And, and I think they're going to go into that. Number two, we know XRP is positioned to become one. That's what they want. It doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. That's what they want. But if if all of these other currencies can become reserve currencies, um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that because of XRP's global reach, global positioning support from the banks, I think XRP has more support than a lot of these other currencies, because a lot of these other currencies barely get used. They barely get used. Go look at the list of reserve currencies and ask yourself, how many people do you know actually use those? But if you look at XRP, tons of people know about XRP. They may, some love it, some hate it, but it's well known. And it's supported not just by regular retail holders and people and users, but it's supported by banks, institutions, governments. Listen, yeah, we can't play just yet. Not yet, because we got to get through that court case. But once we get through that court case, what's stopping us? What's stopping the juggernaut? Just tell me, what's stopping the juggernaut? So in that way, there is that strategic positioning to possibly make a run at becoming something like a reserve currency. And you don't have to just go through the legacy channels. You don't. You can force your way in. If globally they can start having XRP be used at some point in the future, it just automatically becomes a trusted currency. It will be absorbed the same way as gold. The same way as gold is a, a you know, well, look, I, I prefer the term universal currency, actually universal currency. That's really what they should be aiming for. I don't care about reserve currency, go, uh, universal currency, something that they need. They have to have it. And I think that they definitely could position XRP that way. I don't see why not. All these other a lot of these other currencies, a lot of these other things are very weak. Um, 
in comparison to XRP because of its utility, because of its necessity. They're going to need something to connect everything together. They can't get away from it now. Right. So anyway, let's read this little tidbit here. It says for decades, the U.S. dollar has enjoyed unparalleled dominance as the world's reserve currency underpinning global trade and finance. Remember, it's just the dominant currency. It's not the only reserve currency. It says, however, it's unchallenged reign might be approaching an end. This is hey, listen, this is the opinion of modern diplomacy. But I I do believe the U.S. dollars have a massive problems. Nothing lasts forever. It just doesn't. It can't. Nothing in the human world can last forever. Everything has its, its rise, its duration, and its decline. It, that's just law. That is lo the, the law of life. So I think they see the writing on the wall. Look at what's happening with the system. They're flooding the system with debt that cannot be sustained. What other country is going to participate in the United States financial system if it's riddled with debt? We are accumulating billions and billions of dollars every week. And the, the U.S. debt is going up exponentially. You can't just tax the people into oblivion to aid your aid in, in this massive debt. The people are struggling right now. I don't care what anyone says. I'm telling you right now, you look at the actual uh, uh, research out there, the, the, the questioning, the interviewing the people on the ground, they're suffering. So they can't take much more. They can't. Some people are doing great, but a bulk of the bulk of the people are struggling. Facts. So they need relief. So at some point, you have to come in with a solution. If you're going to break down the system, all right, we're seeing the breakdown. You have to come in with a solution. What's the solution? What, what are the obvious solutions? You have the new financial system. You have XRP there. You have XLM there. Is there any other reason why they're so tight and so respected by the government as well as bank? Any other reason? Come on now. And yes, those systems are going to have their own little silo systems. Who cares? As long as that capital can flow through the new financial system, it doesn't make a difference in the end. Their systems are just merely illusions of control. They like to have control. You know, people of money and people of power like to have control. I understand that. Um, but that's all it is. Let them have their illusion of control. Who cares? And that's why a lot of people have this realization of, oh, we're the new 1%. Because that's definitely possible. I'm not saying it's guarantee, but it's definitely possible. Um, so... While they hang on to their illusion of, of control and power and such, they have to use these systems in order to interact because realistically, everything that makes the people uh, who control the world have any type of relevancy or power comes from somewhere else. It comes from somewhere else. So that means that they're going to have to interact with others who are not going to want their control, who are not going to want to be ruled over by them, which means you have to have an, a bridge Remember that? Oh, man, I remember the sweet, sweet days when the XRP army used to say stuff like we are the bridge. Remember that? Before this new age came about. And it's true because that is a possibility of being that bridge, being that liquidity. There's a huge liquidity crisis going on, but it's kept quiet. There's a lot of distraction in the world right now on purpose, on purpose. Let's read a little bit more. It says the International Monetary Fund reports a steady decline in the dollar share of global foreign exchange reserves, underscoring a growing appetite for alternatives. So people can't refute this. This is coming from the IMF. The dollar is dying. And I believe it's on purpose. The U.S. government is doing things to the dollar that is unthinkable right now for a government to do. Facts. This, uh, I can't call it any other way if I'm going to call it fair and honest right down the middle. The rest of the world sees that as an opportunity. Not to mention that a lot of the U.S., unfortunately, is just this way. It's the fact. Um, it is owned by foreign interest. It's just, it's just the way that it is. I mean, that's how business goes. You got the big bucks. You can buy the farmland. You can buy the commercial real estate. Although I'll say a lot of um, foreign uh, uh, interest, a lot of uh, other countries were smart in offloading a lot of their commercial real estate. Did, like we covered an article on that. Did you see that video? See, in, in between, we cover some light stuff and we cover some heavy stuff. I've been trying to stay balanced. But but no doubt about it, we've been covering some heavy information for those who watch consistently.
They offloaded a lot of commercial real estate. Why? Why? Because they're preparing. They know that there's something bad coming in the future, unfortunately, in the U.S. There's no way around it. Commercial real estate, doing terrible. Regular real estate, not that great either. The farmland, everything else is having problems because they can't. We read, we read an article on this, on this channel, on farming. Now, they're holding on to some of the farmland. I get that. But they're having a problem right now where the average farmer age is anywhere from like 65, or I think it was 65, to the upper 70s. That's the majority, not the minority, the majority. Who's going to replace the farmers? Who's signing up to become a farmer? You get what I'm saying? How does that work? And there's not enough machinery to replace them just yet. The technology is not advanced enough where machines could do everything. That's, that's just not how it works. Um, so, so, but they're holding on to that farmland. But what I'm saying is, so uh, there's a lot of foreign interest in the United States. So, so things are being set up where the benefactors, 100% of what's going on right now are not the people. It's not the people, which means what? You're going to need a new system instituted. Um, let's read this a little. You're going to need a new system instituted. <laughs> it's not going to be difficult when the time comes because everyone is looking the other way from the people. I know because like the people is the only thing that people that individuals usually think about to say, wait a minute, they can't do that. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Who's caring about the people except the people themselves if and when they care. But once again, distraction, bread and circus. Look this way. The people are very distracted. Are they even paying attention to what's going on? Hey, make up your own mind. It's just my humble opinion, but this is from what I've observed and read, what I've experienced out in the world. I mean, I'm researching on every possible level, but let's, let's read this little tip here. It says, this shift is fueled by factors such as the relative economic decline of the U.S., the weaponizing of dollar-based sanctions, and the emergence of innovative financial instruments like the China's, like China's digital yuan. Look at how all of this is coming together. You see that new financial system coming in hot. I don't care what anyone says until I see otherwise. Until I see some solid evidence that things have stopped. But the other countries are rushing towards. Uh, uh, the utilization, mass utilization of their digital currencies. But the U.S. is like, no, 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 we don't need one. Really? It's not even about having a, a CBDC because you don't need a CBDC. The Fed said that two years ago. The Fed said, hey, listen, we could just use stable coins, really. And they could. But still, there's no clarity. That's, that's on purpose. They've deliberately held crypto back. Because crypto is a life preserver. Crypto can save their system. Not all of crypto, but, you know, the important stuff that actually has a purpose. Stable coins, the, the liquidity tokens, smart contracts. They've held it all back for a reason because they don't want it to have. They don't want the West to have a life preserver. Once again, and maybe I, I, there's a lot of different reasons it could be for that. But there's clearly a blinder over the eyes of those who are in control. The question is, who's going to do something about that, really? Because really, typically nobody does. You look at what happened in, um, in Europe. And someone brought this up to me in my comment section the other day. Shout out to them. I had that article up on the computer. Actually, I just didn't cover it because I don't have enough time. The, if the videos go past 25 minutes, the algorithm does not like that. The algorithm is everything on YouTube. You know, the titles, the thumbnail. The length of the video, I mean, everything has to be perfect. So I don't cover all the, the articles at times. Uh, but in Europe, now they don't want anonymous crypto transactions. But what about the privacy of the people? The people don't deserve any privacy. So I'm just pointing out that they, the, the, the ones who control these governments, they're very detached from the people. And there's a very cold heartedness towards the people. They're, they're, look, the people are treated more like... Well, I'll hold back from saying certain things, but like things that need to be controlled. But because of that, understand that that is why they'll easily switch a system, easily do things that seem detrimental. But at the same time, it's for a purpose. It's not by accident. It's not by mistake. It's not just because they're incompetent. But anyway, it says this shift is fueled by factors. OK, so then digital yuan, they could have issued something. They could have issued clarity is, was my point and been dominating when it comes to crypto dominating when it comes to digital u.s could dominate anytime it wants it just doesn't it's not on purpose it says here 
Alongside these individual challengers, multi-nation currency arrangements threaten to carve away at, at the dollar supremacy. The rise of alternative reserve currencies, particularly China's digital yuan. You see that? The U.S. could have beat China on this. Easily. We've got the best of the best companies here. And don't get me wrong. China has some amazing companies. Amazing companies. But we have the best of the best companies here, in my humble opinion. I know because I've, I've spoken to many different companies, not just in crypto, across the board. And they have some of those most brilliant minds. And I know I work with some of the people um, when I was younger and uh, in some of these companies. I know the programs that they were in when they were in school. Right. <laughs> and it was they're brilliant. We could have beat them on this, but we didn't. And it's on purpose. It says and potential multinational currency uh, currency blocks like BRICS could reshape global trade and finance. That's on purpose as well. We could beat them to the punch on that as well. So now, let's move on here. Uh, actually, they have another section here. It's titled The Evolving Landscape of Global. And it goes as such. It says the global financial landscape is undergoing a pronounced transformation as central banks globally shift their composition and management of foreign exchange reserves. Indeed, it is a gradual erosion of the once hegemonic status of the U.S. dollar. They're telling you more. The people are the people going to go against the IMF has no vested interest to go against the dollar and say the dollar is dying. But they're t they have to tell the truth now. It's gone so far. They have to tell the truth. Are the people going to listen this time? Because I've been saying it for two to three years now, about three years. It says while the U.S. dollar maintains its position as the world's primary reserve currency, its share of global currency reserves has steadily declined over the past two decades, hovering at around fifty eight point nine percent. In the second quarter of 2023, now people will take that number and they will look away again. They will say, well, it's still 58. That's still pretty dominant. That's not the point. This could be greatly diminished rapidly. Once again, how many uh, countries did they have join BRICS last year? Was it six? Then they had 25 show interest. Now they have an additional 36 showing interest. This 58% could be dramatically, dramatically diminished. That's what needs to be addressed. I've heard some U.S. politicians, although I don't particularly get along with politicians. Um, I do listen to them like to hear what they have to say. And I've heard some of them even address this. And it was shocking to me because they definitely don't want to touch on this. They definitely don't. But it's getting to the point where everyone has to address this. This is in the second quarter of 2023, reflecting a decline exceeding 10 percentage points over this period. That's another thing I want to say. So the whole SDR thing, we've gone over that extensively two years ago. I uncovered everything about that. Uh, we went over everything about that, the origins of, of the IMF and the SDRs and how they work, everything. We broke that all down. The videos are still there. The dates are on the videos. You can look at all of that when that came out. Um, I think that time is almost over. <laughs> I think that time is almost over. Now, other new currencies, XRP could position itself some, to be a dominant force in that space where SDRs used to be 100%. I said this, I said this like two and a half years ago. Once again, I'm just reiterating what I already said, but it's becoming more and more possible. Who knows how long all of this will take because time is nothing to these people. That's what, uh, that's what regular people got to understand. Time is nothing to the so-called controllers. They just sit back and relax. They know everybody else is under pressure. They know they're suffering. That's why I don't under, uh, I don't expect everyone to understand this shifting timeline with these bank coins or um, or how why everything is being held back for so long. This is the biggest this is probably the biggest battle people will ever live through in their lifetime. Where literally the world is on the line right here, right now. And uh, I believe that crypto is made to be looked at as sophomoric and, and, and not to be taken seriously on purpose, not. So that people never have that veil removed from their eyes to see just how big uh, what we're a part of actually is. You know, they look at it as being silly, crypto as being silly, or they look at it as something like the stock market. No, much bigger than that. Much, much bigger than that. That's why every single time they're talking about legit, legit projects is something world shaking. There's some old system being disrupted. Swift governance it doesn't make a difference everything is big but but they deliberately over time have downplayed crypto so people don't take it serious and that conditioning has definitely set in but not for me 
Not for me. I know. I know what I hold. But let's go here. It says moreover concerns about a relative decline in U.S. exports. They're getting deep here, folks. And escalating national debt. Fuel uncertainty about the dollar's long term strength. And this is happening rapidly. This is the, the IMF is telling you in modern diplomacy. It says the evolving landscape of global reserves carries profound implications for international trade and currency markets, risking a more fragmented global economy as diversification away from the dollar towards alternative currencies could potentially de destabilize its role as the preeminent global reserve currency, resulting in heightened volatility and uncertainty within currency markets with economic relationships increasingly influenced by geopolitical alliances, allegiances, rather than purely economic considerations. And then they go into the, the digital yuan as a potential game changer. But remember who also is heavy over there? Ripple XRP is heavy over there with their CBDC platform with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. They go into um, the rest of the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Who's heavy in, who's heavy in Africa overall? Stellar. India as well. Stellar's over there. Um, also, Algorand is in India. Um, Ripple also has some some uh, footholds in in, uh, in Africa as well. Ripple definitely has a foothold in uh, China. Um, I don't know about the Russia. Other people seem to cover that. It says these arrangements involve agreements between countries. OK, so listen. It says the road ahead, a more balanced system. The world of finance is in flux. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why it's up for the taking. The people don't see that yet. They don't get it yet. But I, I understand why central banks around the globe are shaking up their stashes. This is why they're all buying record amounts of gold. This is why gold hadn't plummeted that whole time, even though retail was starting to move some some of their capital out of gold. And, and it went down a little bit. Remember that time it went down just a, just a wee bit. But then it went back up. Why? Because the banks institutional buying of gold is what propped the gold up and they can't stop because see when you're changing things although you have a strong idea you don't have a guarantee either you don't know if everything's going to go awry if everything were to collapse if something terrible were to happen whatever that might be you need to have gold i'm talking about i'm speaking as though i was a central bank or an institution you need to have gold in order to make sure that your capital is protected your value is protected that's all it all adds up they know the system is being switched slowly well listen some people write things off i don't i consider almost everything i look at it i analyze it i'm not afraid of anything right and i know that sometimes in the least expected spots or things where others don't turn over that rock. That's where something important might be found. Now, wait a minute. I don't write this off. Why did they always in the past always talk about this flip of the switch moment when they, like, they might flip the switch? I don't take that lightly. I don't take that lightly. You think they didn't discuss that in meetings with a lot of these institutions and banks? I think that they did. So they know that it's no guarantee, but at any time, if it was necessary, if opportunity presented itself, they could so-called flip the switch. That just means that they have to switch over to that system. It's not a literal switch. And, you know, um, I'm not one to pay attention to when people make something sound uh, sophomoric and, you know, idiotic and such. No, like I'm a very serious person most of the time, I, especially when it comes to research. I understand the implications of what they're trying to say. It's not a literal switch where, boom, everything just happens overnight. But no, it means when they start taking it serious to get on the new system. Yeah, sure. That's definitely that's a definite possibility. Then why, why would Ripple have hundreds upon hundreds of banks? That was like two years ago. How many banks do they have now? That are just waiting. Because that's what it is, is a waiting game. And they can definitely play it. They're sitting on a whole lot of capital. Although some of them might be in trouble, but they know. Really, they're all, you know, most of those people that get in trouble with the with what the banks do are gonna are going to get a, a a capital parachute anyway. It's not nothing's really gonna happen to them. Nobody's gonna hold their feet to the fire. So they can wait it, they can wait. That's how they feel. They can wait. So the regular people don't see it that way. 
They say, well, what's going on? Nothing's happening. The banks are just waiting for that moment where they can start switching over and such. They can wait it out. No problem. And then when they switch over, boom. And they already showed you how they can take over everything. Look at how much Bitcoin they were buying for ETFs each week or each day. They showed you they can go hard in the paint. And that's not even hard in the paint. That's not 80s style basketball slamming Michael Jordan on the court. They could play much harder. That's that's the, <laughs> no, that's a, that's a little bit. They just showed people a little bit. They have so much money to play with. It's unbelievable. So when the time comes, you think that 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 XRP is going to be hard for them to purchase? No, no, no. I don't think that keeping the price down either does anything for the for for the institutions and banks at all. I think more of what happens is they're waiting. They have certain mechanisms in place to break everything down and they have to wait for it to break everything down. It's just like clearing your drains. You put some drain in your drains. You got to let it do its job. You can't just run the water immediately. You can't just, uh, you know, use the pipe immediately. Now you let that, you have to let it sit for a while. Let it break down. Now it's a waiting game. Later you come in, you run the water, pipe is clear. So they're letting things break down right now. Before they take over and dominate whatever they choose to dominate. Who's going to stop them? Who's going to stop their money from taking over something that's legit? And you think they don't, they don't want to control things that are legit? Everything that's legit, they take over and flood it with money. And then later on, retail comes in. It's harder for retail to buy in. It's the same story every single time. XRP right now is the most legit because it won its clarity in court. We're just trying to get, get past the institutional use aspect. That's it. That's it. You got Bitcoin right there. Then you got XRP. Everything else is questionable. I don't, everything else is questionable because it didn't go to court. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Although I do have the firm belief that the other bank coins are in the clear because they're so similar to XRP. What's the point to battle them? That's why I don't think you hear anything about them. Um, so that's my thoughts there. So <laughs> I had like eight articles, but we'll come back tomorrow. We'll do the rest of those articles. OK, this one was so impactful. I just felt I need that. It, I just wrote with the I just went with the flow. I wrote with the flow. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with this. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.